Okay, in this problem, we're gonna take a look at the energy required to take a satellite which has some mass m, and we're gonna move this satellite from a circular orbit of some initial radius r initial to a orbit that is also circular at some radius that is r final. Uh, so we're simply looking at the energy required to change orbits for a satellite. Uh, now we're gonna do this as though this is above the Earth, which of course has a mass of the Earth, uh, but this could apply to any satellite around any central object. So we're gonna start this problem where we often do, and that is by looking at the work energy theorem. Now, this satellite moving along on this, this initial radius, it, it has both some initial potential and kinetic energy. Uh, it has to have kinetic energy because it's moving along in a, a circle in order to remain in orbit. Uh, and of course it has potential energy and that is gravitational potential energy because it has some height relative to the mass of the Earth. So ultimately what we have here really is just the initial mechanical energy of the satellite plus a non-conservative work term. Realize the non-conservative work term is precisely what we're trying to solve for. This term right here is what we're trying to solve for in the problem. The work done by, in this case, a rocket. And then of course we have our final mechanical energy term. So we have our two mechanical energy terms, both initial and final, plus our work done, this being what we're solving for. So in order to solve this problem, rather than actually looking at each term individually, what I wanna do is simply come up with a, a function for the mechanical energy of an object in orbit around some central object, in this case, the Earth. So we know mechanical energy is, is made up of kinetic and potential energies. So let's first look at the kinetic energy of an object in orbit at some radius, any radius, R. Now we know kinetic energy is one half mv squared. And the issue is we're not given the velocity of this satellite, but because this satellite is in orbit around the Earth or around some central object, we know it's gonna have a velocity that is a function of the radius. And this is gonna involve going back to effectively Kepler's laws uh, and even Newton's evaluation of Kepler's laws. And that is by saying the centripetal force acting inward on this satellite is equal to the gravitational force. And not just equal to, but it is made by the gravitational force. Gravity is the only thing pulling this satellite inward. So by setting these two equal to each other, we'll actually be able to come up with a relationship between the radius and the velocity. Uh, if you want to see more about this in Kepler's third law, click up here for the derivation of Kepler's third law. Now we don't have to go quite as far as we do with Kepler's third law here because we can do a little bit of cancellation and get what we need out of this problem as it sits. We don't have to really actually solve for period as Kepler and Newton did. We can take this value right here and substitute it in so that we now have a function for the kinetic energy that isn't dependent on the velocity. We're actually substituting in known values for velocity, V squared being G M M over R. That M isn't there. Okay. Pay no attention to the mistake right there that I made, egregious as it is. If I rearrange this just a little bit, this becomes a little bit cleaner. Uh, we wind up with G M M over two R, not R squared, but two R. So this is the kinetic energy of an object in orbit around some central object. Uh, next, let's look at the potential energy. Now we're dealing with gravitational potential energy over, over a great distance here, so we can't just say gravitational potential is mgh. We have to use our slightly more refined version of gravitational potential energy, and that is negative g mm over r. Again, if you want to see where this is derived, just click up here for a derivation of the actual gravitational potential energy equation. Now we know mechanical energy is simply kinetic plus potential energies, so I'm gonna add these two together to get a function for mechanical energy. Mechanical energy being this term plus this term. Now in combining these together, uh, what we'll come up with is a pretty important equation here, or function. This right here is, is not the answer to the question, the problem, because remember, we're solving for work. 
But this right here is the mechanical energy of a satellite in circular orbit around some other central object. And this, there's a few things that we can take away from this. The first I want to point out is the mechanical energy is negative. And that seems a little bit strange, but go back up here and realize kinetic energy is always positive. And our potential energy, our gravitational potential energy, is always negative. And when something is in orbit at any radius, what that means is it has a total mechanical energy that is negative. It is effectively trapped in orbit. It can't get out. If it had a positive mechanical energy, it would not be bound in orbit. When something is in orbit, we say it is trapped in a gravity well. It doesn't have enough energy to get out. Uh, this is a little bit like when you were a kid, if you used to go to the mall, every now and then they would have these silly toys where you put a quarter in the great big weird bowl shaped thing at the mall, shaped crudely like this. You'd stick a quarter in and it would roll around in a circle and it would spin around faster and faster and faster until it plunked down into a little hole down here. Really all this was was a quarter that was spinning around or a penny or a nickel, whatever you used, nickels were the best. Uh, but as this spun around, this was trapped in here. It didn't have enough energy to make it up out of this well. It's a similar issue with something bound in orbit. It doesn't have enough mechanical energy to make it up out of not this funny shaped bucket at the mall, but the well of gravity that it's trapped in. It has negative mechanical energy. So this is actually the big takeaway from this derivation. To go a step farther to look at the work required to change orbits, that's just taking this and plugging it in up here. Uh, so I'm gonna rearrange this uh, for our non-conservative work term. So the work is non-conservative is going to be our final mechanical energy. We're dealing with final radius minus our initial mechanical energy. So this right here is the, the final result or final answer to this problem. Uh, if we were to evaluate this function uh, for different masses at different radii, we would have exactly the amount of energy required to change the orbit of a satellite. Now in practice, to actually make a satellite go from one orbit to another, there's a few more things involved. This is what's called a Hohmann transfer, uh, which we'll talk about later on once we get into momentum and angular momentum. Uh, but for now, we've solved for the energy required to change orbits. So for now, we've solved for the mechanical energy of an object in orbit, as well as the work required to change the orbit of a satellite. And on that note, that's all for now. Thank you.